What's up everyone, it's Eurosoul, and I woke up today thinking that I was going to take a day off from the world's politics, goings on and so on, but immediately the web grabbed me right back in, so I'm just going to keep this brief because I need to move on, but came across an interesting story which relates to the Jeffrey Epstein map that I've been continuing to build here. Update on that, I've managed to fix the problem with being able to save the positioning of the nodes on the map, so... I'm able to continue finishing it off, and yeah, uh, it, it will be made public in the next few days. I know I've been saying that for a while, but it's a big job and uh, had a few hurdles to overcome. But this story relates to this guy, uh, and you probably don't know who he is, but basically his name is John Mark Dugan. And I covered him in a whistleblower post on Steam, as you can see, about a year ago. In August 2018, it's part of the Whistleblower series, actually, that I'm running on Steam. It's probably up over to 40 people by now. If you haven't seen that already, please do go and check that out. That in itself is a life-changing series. If people take the time to go and look through all of these posts on here, then their view of reality will be hugely different to the view that's being fed through the mainstream and that most people have. Let's put it like that. So... Yeah, this story actually is effectively that, I mean, because this is a British newspaper, Sunday Times, they're highlighting the title of Prince Andrew and the connection to Jeffrey Epstein and so on, trying to uh, say that British Secret Service fears Russia can link Prince Andrew's Jeffrey Epstein views. It's like, oh, it's those damn Russians again. Um, let's just read it because it's only a short story and it's they've really not given you the full lowdown on what's happening here at all. British intelligence chiefs, or chefs, are concerned that Russia may have obtained compromat, compromising material on Prince Andrew over the Jeffrey Epstein scandal. MI6 is understood to be concerned about the activities of a former Florida police officer who had access to the investigation into the billionaire paedophile and then moved to Russia. So first of all, it's a bit of a strange way of framing this, isn't it? Why would the intelligence chiefs be concerned that Russia may have this compromising material? Shouldn't they be concerned that the compromising material exists in the first place and that this member of the alleged royal family is alleged to be a child rapist? Shouldn't that be the concerning thing? Hmm. Anyway, um, the bizarre case of John Mark Dugan, a former deputy in the Palm Beach County Sheriff's Office, has provided further evidence that the prince's repeated efforts to distance himself from allegations of sexual abuse are failing to shield him from the fallout of the Epstein case. A security source said last week there were concerns at MI6 about how much Dugan knows of the original police investigation into the multimillionaire paedophile's activities and what Dugan may have passed on to Russian authorities. So nothing about this is about saying that he is lying or maybe passing on false information. They're basically concerned that he knows information <laughs> full stop, which, you know, it sounds like it's true information or at least details that they're trying to hide. Dugan is known to have had contact with Pavel Borodin, a senior Russian government official, was sometimes referred to as a mentor to President Vladimir Putin. Dugan was working in Palm Beach in 2005 when a woman walked into a local police station and claimed that Epstein had paid her 14-year-old stepdaughter $300 to strip to her underwear and perform an erotic massage. After the Epstein case was reopened in July this year, Dugan claimed on Facebook that he had spoken extensively about it on to the investigating officers and still possess confidential documents that no one else had seen. Dugan, a former US Marine, later fell out with his bosses, resigned in 2009 and ended up in Moscow. He made his Facebook post from Russia. His intervention alarmed intelligence officials, who appeared to have been tracking his activities since he was photographed with Borodin in 2013. A Western intelligence source said Dugan exhibited a number of classic traits that made him suitable for recruitment by a hostile intelligence service. The, serv the source added, his knowledge of the Epstein case would have been of great interest to Russian intelligence. Contacted in Moscow last week, Dugan acknowledged that information about Epstein might be incredibly valuable for any intelligence agency and might give leverage over a guy like Prince Andrew. Asked whether he was controlled by the Russians, he replied, oh God no, I have never met anyone from the government other than immigration officials. He said he thought a whole bunch of people were involved with Epstein and claimed to know mo nothing about Andrew. The Moscow angle proved only one of the prince's Epstein-related headaches last week. Buckingham Palace was once again forced to deny that he had had any form of sexual relationship with Virginia Roberts Giffray, the young woman who appeared in a now-notorious photograph with Andrew's arm around her waist. 
Giffray appeared on American television on Friday with four other alleged Epstein victims to repeat her claims that she once had sex with the prince in a bathroom and that he had said thank you afterwards. The other women included Anuska de Giorgio, a British former model who was educated at Marlborough College with Kate Middleton, now the Duchess of Cambridge, appearing alongside Giffray. De Giorgio claimed she had been groomed and raped by Epstein when she was a teenager. When Geoffrey would see me, he would physically shake because he wanted to get at me, and that was very unnerving, she told an interviewer from the USNBC network. She said there was a very special bond among Epstein victims who were united against a common enemy. She added, Geoffrey thought we were disposable and he threw us all away, and look who's still standing. Epstein was found dead in a New York jail last month. Exactly what Dugan now rem- knows remains a mystery. During the original three-year police investigation, which concluded with a controversial plea bargain in 2008, the deputy was stationed near the financier's Florida mansion. It was from Palm Beach Airport that Epstein's private plane, nicknamed the Lalitra Express, is alleged to have trafficked underage minors from across the globe. In 2016, three years after his meeting with Borodin, Dugan set up a website posing as a Russian hacker called Bad Wolf. Since then, he has published the confidential addresses of US public officials and leaked Democratic Party emails that are believed to have been hacked by Russian agents. Last week, Dugan claimed his encounter with Borodin had been innocent. I wanted to start doing some business in Russia, and I started clicking through Facebook profiles, and I found this dude sitting in front of the Russian parliament. I added him as a friend and started a conversation with him on Facebook. I asked him for a meeting. As an American, it's really easy to get meetings with people here. Buckingham Palace declined to comment on Dugan's activities. The prince has said that he never took part in, witnessed or even suspected any untoward behaviour. But it seems unlikely the Epstein saga is going away anytime soon. Right, so they're basically trying to spin this as if this guy isn't to be trusted and, you know, he's likely involved in hackers and, you know, he's some sort of Russian agent. But let's just go back to the, the whistleblower post that I made last year, long before any of this happened. And this is relating to a video from RT. So, you know, all right, take that to be what you want. It could be, let's just keep an open mind. You know, maybe this is all lies and none of this really happened. And, um, you know, it's all some sort of Russian conspiracy. Okay, that's a possibility. So what actually was reported at the time is that he was in the military. He joined the police. He quickly learned that many of his fellow officers, along with government and council agents and court agents, were corrupt and involved in many kinds of crime. Um, that would have ended in, you know, anybody outside the police basically going to jail. So he specifically reported um, council and court and police officials uh, running a gang who attacked and assaulted dark-skinned people who had not committed crimes, then posted photos on Facebook with captions such as, he fell down some stairs. One cop wore a hat with punishment written on while on duty. The head of internal affairs, along with others, being filmed on a golf course with naked cocaine-snorting prostitute, drug gangs being protected from other drug gangs instead of arrested, and regular abuse of the public through violence and extortion. Now, there was evidence provided of all of this, right, including photos and uh, interviews and so on. And as I pointed out here, you know, there are many other whistleblowers from the CIA and other places who have described CIA involvement with cocaine dealing and, you know, total corruption, basically, of the political system via cocaine and so on. And then obviously we can uh, go on to Edward Snowden. And there's many, many cases of people from within that system blowing the whistle on massive crime. Uh, So he basically fled America, was his story, to go to uh, Russia because he feared for his safety, understandably, since he basically said that large parts of the uh, political system and policing system there were completely criminal. I recommend you come and check out this post and particularly the video here, um, on YouTube, which is a proper, you know, in-depth look at his story and interviewing people related to the case and so on. Make up your own mind, but I think you can at least see that when we come back to this piece here in the Times, that basically sort of skirts around the whole issue and basically says, oh, he had, he had a bit of a problem with his bosses. <laughs> well, no, I think it's a, it's a bit more than he had a bit of a problem with his bosses. Um, you know, anybody with more than two working brain cells should be able to see that this piece from the Times is very carefully worded to try to skew perception of people who maybe don't know the full details towards thinking that, um, you know, this guy can't be trusted and maybe it's some sort of Russian-led attempt to discredit the West, you know. You know, I don't know the full story of Russia's involvement with this, but I would say the evidence at the moment looks more like uh, this guy. Well, he's saying he doesn't even have any invest, any any knowledge of, of Andrew. 
So ultimately, you know, who knows what's going on? <laughs> Maybe the Times just invented the whole thing to, to sort of generate a story. I don't know. But um, yeah, anyway, uh, he's now on the map and we'll see how this develops. Uh, as you can see here, I've added him in and the numbers of people on this list are immense. Uh, it's just more and more and more organizations and people being added all the time. Uh, and most of the people on here are in here due to fairly substantial links or evidence spanning years and decades. And, you know, being on this map doesn't mean, say, you're a bad person or you're involved in any of the crimes that Epstein was involved in, but it means that you are directly connected in some way or another, even if just because you're at a party or something like that, uh, to him in some way. And, for example, a good example of that would be uh, Margaret Trudeau, Justin Trudeau's uh, mother, uh, the leader of Canada right now, Justin Trudeau. Basically, she's on here because she was a friend of um, Roy Cohn and also connected, as it happens, to Fidel Castro. Um, and Roy Cohn up here was the mentor of uh, Donald Trump and claimed by many people to have been heavily involved in blackmail, sexual blackmail of politicians and eventually was struck off as a lawyer. Very Basically, some people described him as the most evil person they'd ever met. Um, and she was at one of his birthday parties, apparently. So, you know, that's why she's on here. It doesn't infer that she's committed any crimes or done anything wrong or bad, but the point of this map is to connect everybody who is in a position of power to these people who are doing, who are known to be doing very dodgy things, usually with children or sexual blackmail, that kind of thing. And then as more evidence comes in, we can tie up the, the dots in a way that's more substantial but many of the people on this map are here for having committed crimes or having been known to have committed crimes but never been prosecuted for it typically because they ran governments and that kind of thing um so yeah uh as i said this will be released in a few days hopefully once a bit more data has been put on here and checked out and so on and uh yeah we'll take it from there so anyway thanks for watching and as usual if you like this please do give me a thumbs up or an upvote on steam if you're viewing this post on steam and uh share it on with your friends and until next time peace